Hello, we're back again. Uh, obviously, the last video wasn't the last video. Uh, this one's still going. So, perfectly, um, a viewer, John Graham, commented on this last video. Thank you very much, for John. Um, it's what I was chasing was some information um, from people who knew more than what I did. And, and that's exactly what I got, which is really good. So, um, I made a few mistakes in the last video explaining um, how the porting was set up. I had said that the pressure gauge uh, that the sender which comes out on the panel read from was before the minimum pressure valve. That's not right, it's after. It's clearly after, it's right there. I was, had my finger on it. Um, so what John was saying was to go through and find out where that pressure drop is. Uh, quite simply by taking the discharge hose off. So this is the hose that comes straight out of the compressor. It sits behind the non-return valve so the tank holds a little bit of air. Take it off, um, take out the oil filler cap, which has a tiny little bleed hole in the middle, which you can see, and it vents out through the side. So as you crack this, it um, lets the tank bleed down. So take that out, and then what I've got in here is a, um, is a fitting, just B BSP to uh, JOC, which goes then to my um, Tetra gauge, my three, my test gauge. Um, you can see at the moment the tank is holding a tiny little bit of pressure because um, I've run it to see what happens. So the idea is now what you do is you run the compressor free vented to atmosphere and now you'll actually see the minimum pressure valve setting what it's, what it's set at. So let's do that. And just so you can see, there you go, there's a fitting there. Just adapts from the tank hole to um, the, th the thread that was on my test gauge comes out and up into my gammon old test gauges and then as you can see the discharge hose disconnected from oops the discharge port and that's the um, pressure sender so let's fire it up I'm seeing zero pressure on the gauge which is true because there's the sender and it's just vented straight to atmosphere so it should be zero um, what I suspect and should see is as soon as I start the compressor whether there's a tiny little bit of leakage um, through the intake valve until it gets enough pressure to close it or you know you would see some sort of pressure rise tiny little bit should be negligible um, but then when this thing loads so when it's commanded to open I should get a free flow of air out there I should get very little pressure up on the display like a rule but because this tank line is before the minimum pressure valve, I should read the actual minimum pressure setting. So let's do that. Uh, air will pour out, sorry, it should blow. And then I should see this minimum pressure valve setting. So let's do that. Just reset the e-stop and press go. So that's good. It's actually high. So four bar is 400 kPa. So I can adjust now the minimum pressure valve down to 400 kPa and that's a good starting point. Okay, so that's four bar on the minimum pressure valve now, adjusted and locked off. Still vented to atmosphere, um, and like I said, 400 kPa is four bar. So just want to confirm that we still got zero bar 
on the gauge and we'll talk about that why in a minute so let's just fire it up and load it So I know now I've got zero bar from here to here because that's the gauge line. That's just vented out. I was reading zero on the display, so that's good. So now I'll hook up the discharge line and disconnect this line from where it goes into the intercooler. And then I'll see how much restriction this one hose makes. Well, what did we just see? We just saw, just by connecting that one hose, which was vented to atmosphere, a 1.6 bar pressure increase. So just to go, whatever that is, 400 mil, not even 500 mil, half a meter of hose, took 1.6 bar. Um, we did see this gauge, which I left hooked up to the tank. We did see this um, gauge drop from that original um, minimum pressure valve setting of four bar that I set. And that makes sense because remember in inside here was a big strong spring with the piston on it and then that piston's got a little weak spring that pushes on the on the non-return poppet so you got to remember that any pressure that we generate here at all has an effect on that large spring and in effect pushes that big piston back which then reduces the amount of um, holding force of the poppet against the seat so John Graham um, that left the comment he's absolutely right before with the comment saying that you're not seeing the minimum pressure valve setting the way i was doing it before you do you must have this vented to atmosphere you've got to have no restriction whatsoever to actually set the minimum pressure valve um, that makes sense so just to recap that again any back pressure that comes out of the discharge pushes that big spring because that piston is a piston it's moving against air pressure it pushes it back therefore the force that it was mechanically holding the poppet against the seat um, is gone and the only thing holding it against the seat is that tiny little weak spring. So of course you're going to see a lower pressure um, as soon as we get back pressure. So take that to the extreme. Crank this right up now to 8 or 9 bar. You would imagine that large piston is going to shuttle so far back that because um, this is vented to atmosphere, remember there's a little hole on this side of the spring chamber, that big piston is going to come all the way back. And, and squeeze the squeeze the hell out of that um, spring and then all you got is the little poppet as a non-return valve so this thing becomes ineffective the higher and higher the discharge pressure becomes so what we're going to do now is we know we got our 1.6 bar here let's just keep chasing it what i'll do is um hook it back up to the after cooler and then it's a bit of a rabbit warren if i can get the camera down in there but right around the back inside here, I can't get the camera down in there, is the other hose. Can you just see it there? That's the one that takes out, heads off out the front. I'm going to undo it and we're just going to see um, what sort of pressure increase um, the after cooler creates plus this hose. And we'll just keep doing that and then after that I'll split it here and we'll see um, what pressure it creates. Okay, now we're going to measure from the discharge all the way down through the intercooler and out the hose that comes out to the discharge where the um, little manual ball valve is. Let's see what that does.
So 2.2, just to go through the intercooler up into uh, this valve. Um, you can see right through the valve, it's clear. The next step we'll do, I think we'll hook it all back up and then where this ducts into the receiver, I'll crack it there and we'll do another test as well and see what that comes up to. Okay, hose disconnected. And point it outside. Try and do this with uh, one hand. Well there you have it, we saw 2.9, so 3 bar pretty much, from this point, through this hose, through the after cooler, through the second hose, through the valve and through the third hose, so 3 hoses, 3 bar, that's, that can't be right, that's, that's just way too much. Um, like I was saying earlier, I don't think these hoses have been changed, it's, it's odd. I can't work it out, but you know, three bar just seems it's way too much to me. Um, I didn't really see much of a change across the the after cooler, um, but definitely the hoses, most definitely. Um, what I did do off camera was to fill the receiver fully, fully loaded up, and then I um, undid this hose here, and then I opened that ball valve that's around the other side there on the back. And I drained that whole receiver backward out through that pipe, through the ball valve, through the after cooler, and back out through this. And I mean, I did it in a bucket. Nothing came out. Um, only thing that came out was was water, a little bit of water and air. And I assume the water's sitting in the bottom of the um, in the bottom of the after cooler. So what's next? Do I increase the hose sizes of these, or do I also rehash the whole situation here instead of going from here all the way down and then across and then all the way around the front and the side down to the back shorten all the hoses up and make them larger diameter I think I've got wiggle room in the hydraulic fittings because they are quite thick wall and I mean the same thing goes to nine bar that's that's not much when it comes to a hydraulic fitting which is what these are so I could potentially go thinner wall fittings um, I could go crazy <clears throat> and actually come out of here and put my own after cooler um, even um, on an angle so condensate flows to the bottom where I could have a drain out of the after cooler um, and then just make a more direct route from here straight to the receiver rather than going halfway around Australia to get there. So it's no wonder I'm seeing such a big drop when the compressor unloads. You know, we're seeing 0 0.6 of a bar. You know, it's taken three bar just to get it from here into the receiver of free flow. Mind you, in saying that, that is free flow. You know, that might be a bit misleading because I did that have, have that to atmosphere where that's the, ma the, the maximum amount of flow um, you could imagine you'd get through that line when there's no restriction and it just goes straight to atmosphere. Of course, you're probably gonna see the biggest um, pressure drop through the hose along there, I'd assume. Um, <clears throat> but you could well imagine still, it's gotta be better than that, surely. Um, Again, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not an expert in this stuff at all. So um, if you do know, or would please if you could leave a comment um, that could guide me in the right direction, um, I'll try something else next as well. Um, it's not hampering the use of the machine. It's still working. It's just not working as good as probably what it should work. It could be a hell of a lot more efficient than what it's running now um, if it didn't have all this back pressure. Uh, so like I say, please leave a comment um, if you do have some suggestions I could try and I'll, I'll definitely give them a go. Um, thanks again for watching. If you do like this content or if you think it's funny that I'm mucking around with something like this, please leave us a thumbs up um, and it helps out a lot. Eh? Thanks a lot.